Hunter x Hunter episode 111, Charge X and X Invade. What will we find in the King's Palace? Who knows? Who knows what's gonna happen? Who goes first? Moral? Some of you are walking into your deaths, most likely. Interesting choice to have this be. Oh, we heard, it, we heard it already. We heard it already. Oh god, what now? <laughs> what now? What in- what? My first thought when I saw the dragon was Jing, but it can't be. Something's coming from above. So they're that good at masking? This is a fourth party? This is good for us, right? Maybe? Depending on who it is? Everyone felt that. She does it so effortlessly, too. That's such a great, great shot. That's such a great, great shot. Oh, wait, wait, it's, uh, we've seen this. It's a Zoldic. Zeno? And they have no idea. No idea. Kill, kill. <laughs> wow, Kalua paying attention to Gon in a moment like this. Peter's pumped. Wait, what? It's grandfather and Netero. Do we, do we do we not coordinate this with Netero at all? Finally, finally. Okay, just scorched earth. Brace yourselves for the unexpected. I feel like this is a relief, despite the fear. Like in all the things I was most afraid of, the worst part always seems to be like the two minutes before, or ten minutes before, or one hour before, or whatever. Night before. At least action keeps you occupied. At least you have some motion externally to accompany what's happening inside. They just hit him with Nen, nen nukes, Nen Napalm. And they mask themselves. She's awake, like for the first time. Good, I really... I want him to live up to the hype. She found him. Yeah, that's right, we haven't even seen her at all. Like, reach her limits. I don't know what to think about this, man. Bad move. <laughs> Text. Netero risking his favorite shirt for this. It better be worth it. Figures that Netero and Granddaddy Zoldic would be acquaintances or friends. Might be similar to Gon and Kurapika's future. High level men in different walks of life. I was expecting Netero the king. Netero versus Neferpito is interesting. Maybe the fact that he's preparing for the king makes it more feasible for him to defeat Neferpito. Oh my god, this is killing me. <laughs> this is killing me to cut away from- I know this is gonna be really cool. What is happening right now in the palace? Is that old, huh? Who's he talking to? Who's he talking to? Yakushiki Kanno. Korea Motomo Yakai Jaro. It's gotta be super crazy and stacked for Netero to be Netero. My expectations are sky high. I'm really curious who he's talking to and if it's significant. I was looking for clues, but it's all shots of what seems like their home and a lot of food being eaten. Who do we know that eats a lot? I don't really know what to make of the mind reading thing except to try to keep track of it. The only thing I can possibly think of is something I'm not quite sure is real. When you immerse yourself so deeply and so dedicatedly and so passionately into something, it starts to feel like everything is transparent. I've had this experience in three different domains. One is that year of my life where I threw myself headfirst into social situations via nightlife. It started to feel like a really predictable 
game investments the times where i've been the most all in energetically non-stop reading non-stop observing non-stop discussing were the times where certain investments felt obvious and they always paid off and the third is a little bit lower stakes which is just like during sports you know sometimes if you're in the zone you can see things before they happen in a sense the reason i say i'm not sure it's real is because it's possible that there's a, a hindsight thing being formed maybe it's just elation so your brain sort of backdates the feeling like you knew already if there is something real to this phenomenon it doesn't feel like something you can directly turn on and off you can sort of create the right environment for it though in those examples some of that has to be natural impulse natural magnetism to the thing and then like hope it emerges a totally separate thought i had thinking about netero is that it's so cool to think about somebody who has already mastered the basic skills what they could do given the time alone to push that to its limits it almost feels exponential to anything we may have seen from gon or Kluo up to this point given the creative potential of nen it's not like adding a new skill gives you one more skill it gives you like that skill times the other skill and all the possible interplays then another multiplier on that is the level of mastery so if you have all of the nen things mastered at the highest level it feels like you're basically at a point approaching the infinite which again since then is life has its parallels right adding one new thing to your capabilities is not one new thing it's that new thing times all the other pre-existing things that you have or at least has the potential to be and also then their skill level in each of those things it might end up being something like a rule of synthesis and the underlying phenomenon underpinning the idea that the whole can be greater than the sum of its parts I bet she's gonna love it. Bizarre, bizarre. So she's on a lag? What? That's not fair. <laughs> It happened before it happened. It happened before. Wait, I'm so lost. He just broke time. Time just doesn't apply. He just beat time. So what, he's appearing on a time delay? He's slightly ahead of perceived time. One of the most terrifying experiments I ever read was one where they had subjects look at a clock while hovering their finger over a button that they could press at any time. And they were asked to observe on the clock when they had made the decision to push the button, all the while being uh, neurologically monitored, I guess. What the study claimed to find was that neurological activity associated with the decision-making process happened far earlier than the subjects were able to report, which if true, might mean that conscious control is sort of a trick of the brain. Who knows if that's valid? Who knows what it means if valid? But sort of terrifying to think about as a possibility. Then are doing something neurologically with men, maybe. Oh, now It wasn't even a fight. Netero. <laughs> I love this Netero-focused episode. Gratitude. Huh. Please tell me more. Please tell me more. He looked like Chuck Norris when he was young. Damn, 10,000 gratitude punches. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you! First of all, imagine feeling like you have to repay a debt to martial arts, like it's a spirit. That already says a lot right there, I think. It's a living thing to him, like he sees the face of God in it, speaking of being in the zone. The other thing is that it's really weird how this show in, what, 2011? Managed to copy Demon Slayer Season 4, Episode 6 in 2024. What do they call it in the show? Repetitive emotion? To paraphrase what I said about that. If you focus really deeply on a certain emotion, or certain feeling, you can get a very heightened sense of it, to an almost pain-like point, even for pleasurable things. Like, for example, you go deeply enough into all that people have done for you, and you really just sit and think about that and push it as far as you can go, it ends up being almost overwhelming. There's like this magnitude of force that can come from a kind of deep dive on a very, very particular point of focus. I'm sure a lot of people have hit on this accidentally where you start to like invent this sad scenario that never happened. And before you know it, it's real and you're like crying, you know, and then you kind of snap back to reality or like, what, what the hell am I doing? Or pleasant daydreams, your mind sort of runs with it. Next thing you know, you're in like some fantasy version of your life and living the full emotional weight of it. Now, I think what this is and what Demon Slayer did with this, maybe influenced by this, is they connected that to a physical motion that gives power and trying to imagine how that would transpire there would be like the 
the emotion and then the action. But the more that's practiced, the more that neural link gets built and reinforced and becomes stronger and stronger and more streamlined to the point where the gap may be reduced almost nothing. It's like muscle memory, but with a little bit more. It's like emotion to physical muscle memory. I mean, I think on a very simple level, there's a lot to this idea. The things you practice mentally end up becoming grooves. They end up being more automatic and faster, which is hard to undo, which is why it's sort of important to be cognizant of what you're building. Netero building ultimate physical power through gratitude or something like that. He turned this barren winter hellscape into a garden with his gratitude. Or maybe the seasons changed. Thank you. I will never see an eagle the same way again after what happened to Kamugi. Okay, it was the seasons. I thought he literally turned this, like transformed the the, the landscape. That are out here just terraforming. Thank you. I feel very grateful. So grateful. Two years. Imagine doing this for two years without seeing any progress. That's real gratitude. Nidoro is starting to feel like he is to martial arts what Kamugi is to Gungi. Well, like a second. Okay, so cool. But to him, it probably feels like not that fast if he's able to do it at all. I feel like maybe I had Netero wrong. I thought he was just like an adrenaline junkie and just seeking fun and something exciting. But he's, he's way more deep than that or, or was at some point. Maybe now the fun begins with all that gratitude out of the way. Netero makes me feel like I waste my life. <laughs> like I waste my time. I'm not throwing 10,000 gratitude punches. Just seeing this guy sitting down, I'm like, what are you doing? Why are you sitting? You could be throwing gratitude punches. Netero no kobushi wa... I like how he punched not only the guy who was sitting down, the leader, but also all the students. Oh, your master is, is dead. What? You can have it. You can have the deed, yeah. I wasted all this time sitting. I'm mean, credit to this guy. Some people would still deny. I'll do you this favor of taking your school. And since then, has he been building or just enjoying? Does Peter survive? I feel like she has to survive for Gon. Yeah, that's what it was. It was the field of flowers. Oh yeah, he's still been training. He, he's pushed it even farther. Wow, never beautiful feeling fear or surprise. That's all your lucky. Okay, there we go. It's a tether, an anchor. Why am I sort of rooting for Pete? Never Pito. I just caught myself. Like, I wanted to still be in this fight somehow. I don't know where I am right now, emotionally. Last time I felt this way in my life was the Phantom Troop arc. This is what kept her on this planet. Now we're putting in a lot of work this episode. All that happened before the napalm could even hit the building. What was it, like five seconds? Okay, but, well, I don't know, man. We haven't seen anything. We don't know. I don't know what they can handle as a big, large group. This stairwell. Wow. We got numbers. <laughs> that was fast. Right into it. At least it's just Yupi. At least it's just one of them. Finally, we get to figure out what Yupi does, besides looking really big and opening curtains. So I was expecting a fight. I don't even know if I would call it a fight. Like it wasn't, it wasn't. It was mostly Netero just coming in and doing what he wanted to Neferpito. I will say the power and backstory is a relief. It matches, it fits. Of all the hype. In fact, it's pretty amazing that Gon was able to touch him during that little uh, game of tag or whatever that was back on the hot air balloon. I'm trying to think what I can do in my life that is as cool, as productive as a thousand gratitude punches. But I guess that might actually be counter to the spirit of the gratitude punches. There wasn't really a reason except for the gratitude. Hard not to respect a man who loves his craft that much that he sacrifices his body for 
two years for gratitude towards a thing, like a concept. Did this episode take place in the span of like a minute? Speaking of unexpected things, I knew Netero was going to be a part of this. I didn't know where he'd fit in. I didn't think he would come in and just dominate Neferpita like that. I didn't know that Zoldik would also be here. I didn't know there'd be more questions raised about who the hell Zoldik was talking to. Might just be the audience, but the way I'd imagined it was Netero takes on the king himself and is destroyed, leaving the other group, the main group, to deal with it. But now I have just no idea. Mm -hmm.